Hi, welcome to Excel. My name is Josh and I'm going to be your host today. And today we're going to be doing circle geometry. And we're just going to jump straight into Theorem 1. Theorem 1 states that if I take a line from the center of the circle perpendicular to a chord, it bisects that chord. And therefore, line AC is equal to line CB. And the reason for that is just perpendicular line from center to chord. So now Theorem 1's converse states that if I take a line from the center of the circle to the midpoint of that chord, then that line is perpendicular. And C2 and C1 are 90 degrees. And the proof of that is line from center to midpoint chord. So now we're on to Theorem 2. And Theorem 2 states that if I have an arc subtending an angle at the center and at the circumference, the angle at the center is going to be twice the size of the angle at the circumference. And the reason for that is 2 times the angle at the circumference is equal to the angle at the center. So now we're on to Theorem 3. And Theorem 3 states that if I have the diameter of the circle subtending an angle at the circumference, then that angle is going to be equal to 90 degrees. And the proof for that is angle in a semicircle. So now Theorem 3's converse states that if I have a chord subtended by a 90 degree angle, that chord is going to be a diameter. And the reason for this is chord subtended by a 90 degree angle. So now Theorem 4 states that if I have angles in the same segment of a circle, like so, these angles will be equal. And the proof for this is angles in the same segment. So Theorem 4's converse states that if I have a line segment joining two points, and this line subtends two equal angles at two other points, then all four of these points, or A, B, C, and D, are going to be concyclic. And the reason for this will be line segments subtends equal angles on the same side. So Theorem 5 states that if I have a cyclic quadrilateral or I have a quadrilateral in which all four points are touching the circumference of a circle, the opposite angles such as D and B and A and C are going to be supplementary or in other words they're going to add up to 180 degrees. And the proof for this is opposite angles in a cyclic quad. So Theorem 5's converse states that if I have a quadrilateral and its opposite angles, such as A and D and C and B, are supplementary or add up to 180 degrees, then this quadrilateral is going to be cyclic. And the reason for that is opposite angles are supplementary. So Theorem 6 states that when I have a cyclic quadrilateral, the exterior angle, or C2, is going to be equal to the interior opposite angle, or A. And the reason for this is exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle of a cyclic quad. So Theorem 6's converse states that if I have a quad and its exterior angle is equal to its interior opposite angle, then this quad is going to be cyclic. And the reason for this is going to be exterior angle is equal to interior opposite angle. So now we're on to Theorem 7. And Theorem 7 states that if a tangent to a circle is drawn, then that tangent will be perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. And the reason for this is tangent perpendicular to radius. So Theorem 7's converse states that if I take a line and I draw it perpendicular to the radius at the point where the radius meets the circle, then that line, AB, is going to be a tangent. And the reason for this is line perpendicular to radius. So now Theorem 8 states that if we have two tangents drawn from the same point outside of the circle, then these two tangents will be equal in length. And the reason for that is tangents from the same point. So now we're on to our final theorem and theorem 9 states that if we have an angle between the tangent and the chord from the point of contact this angle is going to be equal to the angle in the alternate segment and the reason for this is tan chord theorem. So now we're on to theorem 9's converse and theorem 9's converse states that if I have an angle between a line and a chord and this angle is equal to another angle subtended by that chord in an alternate segment then this line or AB is going to be a tangent. And the reason for this is angle between line and chord. So now that we've done revising our nine theorems and their converses, I'm going to take you through Excel's four-step approach to any circle geometry question. Step one, look at the diagram. Step two, look at the added data. And then step three, very important guys, do not look at the questions. And finally, step four, which is to extract as much information as possible. We can do this by color coding our parallel lines, identifying our equal angles, and leaving yourself clues to theorems you may have already recognized in order to anticipate the required. Of course, this is all done so that we avoid that jamais vu feeling that we've had 
as previously discussed in our Platinum Nugget. Okay guys, so now we're going to complete an example as a demonstration of the Excel four-step approach to answering circle geometry questions. And we're going to go into step one now, which is to look at the diagram. So now on this diagram that we've been given, we can see that STU looks like a tangent and ATCB looks like a cyclic quad. So those theorems are probably going to be important and we should keep them in mind. Step two is to look at the data that we've been provided. So the first point in our data is that O is the center of the circle. And this is important for identifying whether something is a radii or a diameter. Our second point is that STU is a tangent to the circle. This confirms what we thought in step one. So we're just going to make a note here that says tangent to remind ourselves when we're answering the question later on. Right. Our third point is that BC is equal to CT. And this is important because we'll probably need these chords later on in the question. Our third point is that ATC is equal to 105 degrees and CTU is equal to 40 degrees. So we're just going to start drawing our angles onto our diagram. So we know that ATC is equal to 105 and that CTU is equal to 40. Right, our last point is that ATCB is a cyclic quad, so we know that we're going to need to know our cyclic quad theorems when answering the questions. Step 3. We have our questions, but we're going to ignore them for now while we move on to the next step. Step 4. So now we're going to extract as much information as possible from this diagram before moving on to the questions. So the first thing that you can see is that we have an arc subtending both an angle at the center and at the circumference. And we know that in theorem 2, that therefore that O1 is going to be equal to double A1. So we're going to write a note here and say that O1 is equal to 2 times A1. The second thing that we can see is that we have an angle between a tangent and a chord. And we know that because of theorem 9, that this angle is going to be equal to an angle in the alternate segment, which in this case is A2. So therefore A2 is going to be equal to 40 degrees. The third thing that we can see is that because that ATCB is a cyclic quad, we know that all of its opposite angles are going to be supplementary, which means that they add up to 180 degrees. So now that we've extracted as much information as possible, we can now start answering the questions. And the first question that we have is, calculate with reasons the size of angle A1. So let's look at A1. Now we know that A1 is half of the size of O1, but we don't have O1 yet. So we're going to have to approach this as in a different way. Let's see what we can make equal to A1. We know that BC and CT are equal chords. And we know that if we have two equal chords subtending two angles, those angles are going to be equal. And the reason for that is going to be angles subtended by equal chords. So now all we have to do is calculate the size of A2. And we already know that A2 is going to equal to 40 degrees. So therefore, all we have to state is that A2 is equal to 40 degrees because of tan chord theorem. So therefore, A1 is equal to 40 degrees. So now question two is asking us to calculate the size of O1. And we know that O1 is going to be equal to two times A1. And we've already found out that A1 is equal to 40 degrees. So the first thing we're going to write is that A1 is equal to 40 degrees. And we're just going to write proven. And since we've already proven that O1 is equal to two times A, all we're going to just say is that O1 is equal to two times 40 degrees, which is equal to 80 degrees. And the reason for that is going to be two times angle at circ is equal to the angle at the center. So now we're on to question three. And question three is asking us to find the size of angle B2. So let's look at B2. And what we notice is that the actual angle B is part of the cyclic quad. And we know that opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. And we have one of these opposite angles. 
because T is equal to 105 degrees. So we actually know that B plus T is going to be equal to 180 degrees. So therefore, B is going to be equal to 180 minus 105. So angle B is going to be equal to 75 degrees. And the reason for this is going to be opposite angles of a cyclic quad. So now that we have angle B, all we need to do is find angle B1 to give us angle B2. So let's look at angle B1. Now we know that OB and OC are radii because they both come from the center of the circle. Now if I have two radii that form a triangle, these two angles are going to be equal. So that we know that B1 is going to be equal to C1 and that's because of radii. So if B1 and C1 are equal, then we can find out the actual value of these angles using angles in a triangle. Now we know that the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So the triangle of OBC actually has to equal 180 degrees. So B1 plus C1 is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 80 degrees. So B1 plus C1 is going to be equal to 100 degrees. And because both of these angles are the same, all we have to do is divide that 100 by 2. So therefore, that we know that B1 is equal to 50 degrees. And the reason for that is angle in a triangle. Cool. So now that we have B1 and we know the whole angle of B is going to be equal to 75 degrees, all we need to do is just minus it. So therefore, B2 is going to be equal to 75 degrees minus 50 degrees. And the answer for then for B2 is just going to be 25 degrees. So finally, we have question four. And question four is asking us to work out the size of angle C2. Let's look at C2. Now we notice that C2 is part of the larger angle C, which forms in the triangle ABC. And what do we know about triangles? We know that triangles have to have interior angles that equal 180 degrees. And we have all the other angles needed except for C2. So if the triangle ABC has to equal 180 degrees, then C2 has to be equal to 180 minus 40, which is our A1, which we've proven, minus B, which is 75 degrees, and then minus 50, which is our C1. So that means that C2 is just going to be equal to 15 degrees. And the reason for this is going to be angles in a triangle. Okay guys, thanks for watching. We hope you've learned a lot. And the last point that we want to leave you with is, remember, whenever doing a circle geometry question, remember Excel's four-step approach. Till next time.